but there tells a story um, about the popularity of these clubs. The wrapper's still on it and it's been in here for well, quite some time. But the wrapper's coming off because I think this club should be in a lot more of your bags. Yeah, this morning the shutters aren't even up and uh, it's pretty grim out there this morning. A lot of water, hand-picking golf balls, but we are going to get hitting some golf balls very, very shortly. And I'm going to look at a club which is, I've largely ignored. I think the masses largely ignore, but it keeps coming up in the comments. I keep getting asked for this review. The question is, what is it? Right, now the first thing you've got to ask yourself before I start hitting golf balls and finally reveal what club is in my hands. Um, you've got to ask yourself, you've got to be a bit more open-minded. Are you a golfing snob? And potentially, you know, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll probably put myself in that category and I say that, so what would I describe a golfing snob as? Well, somebody who perhaps dismisses certain clubs because they might think they're better than who these clubs are aimed at. Let's put it that way. So the club in question is, I have got a seven hybrid in hand. I did have the loft on this. I think it's 27 degrees in terms of the loft. I'll confirm that down below. And I've also got a five hybrid. Why is this in my hands? Well, I review everything from the perspective of an average golfer. And what I've found out in recent weeks, we've done a lot of videos that look at kind of strong lofted irons and then issues with being able to gap, get gaps right in bags. It throws up a couple of issues. The top end of the bag is a difficult one to gap anyway. And also reading through the comments, a lot of people that struggle, certainly with slower swing speeds, in generating distances with the sort of six, five and four irons. So then the questions came in about reviewing seven woods was the question, not seven hybrids, seven woods. And I'm gonna look at that as well. But for this morning, I had a little route round yesterday afternoon and I came across this JPX Fly High Mizuno 7. Now, as I just mentioned, it hasn't even had the wrapper off. So again, that shows there's very little interest in this club. But what I want to find out is, are we all just being a little bit ignorant to a club that could be a massive boost in our bags? There's two absolute peaches in terms of shots. You may be wondering why you're looking at my back today. Well, I can't get the camera out that side because it's literally uh, six inches of water. So that's why we're facing that way. What I want to talk about is this, right? It wasn't supposed to be a review of the club itself. It was supposed to be a review about the potential of a seven hybrid or seven wood and the benefits of it. But I've got to just throw in that first of all, what a stunning little looking golf club this is uh, from Mizuno. I think it sits absolute perfect. I love the black and grey separation in terms of the face and the back end of the club. I reckon when you see, so they've got some bold white stripes in terms of the face grooves. It sits behind the ball, you see plenty of loft. And I think again that's a real positive for a lot of average golfers. I think it would give you a lot of confidence sat behind the ball. But then you've got other things to consider. The shaft that I've got in these things is effectively exactly the same length as what you'd play in your seven iron and your five iron. So when I get this in hand, it's the, the confidence that it breeds straight away is that I've, I feel like I've got a shorter club in hand, but I've got a bigger club head profile. It's the same for me as what my mentality between my ears tells me about the mini driver. I've got a shorter shaft, uh, a smaller head type or a, or a big enough head type to breed confidence and control uh, using drive. Well, it's the same concept for me using this. But seeing all that loft, seeing the ball flight, it's incredible. And I came in here first thing this morning, took the wrapper off, uh, no warm up. And again, first ball of the day, it was just so easy. Swing speed would have been down, but so easy just to get the ball 
airborne and out there. And I think that's where a lot of people would see a huge benefit in having this in the bag. But the other thing is, I mean, what they've done really well, I don't know if you can pick it up on that, but there's a nice sound from it. There's a nice feel from it. And there's a nice price to it. And again, I always, I always dismiss price when it's at the top end. But I think when we're looking at this, this is something that, again, these are, in general terms, and UK pounds, around 120 quid with a graphite shaft in it. And so it's no different than adding another iron to the bag. Effectively, Mizuno iron, well, Mizuno irons are probably... Uh, in the large majority, more expensive than that. So it's an easy club to add to the bag. And I just wonder how many golfers would benefit from having this seven, six, five, four hybrids in the bag, because again, you've got a little bit of versatility with this as well, in terms of little shots around the green. I think plenty of people would use that as a chipping tool around the green as well. So there's plenty of versatility with it. Anyway, lots of opinion there, but what I'm gonna do is get some numbers and I'll also hit the five hybrid and then we'll have a look what it does in terms of performance. Well, like I've said on previous occasions, reviews can be overcomplicated. I don't think they need to be, and we're just going to get straight into numbers and wrap this one up because uh, it's a very, very positive response, this. Uh, numbers for the seven, starting with, first of all, fairly consistent in terms of uh, a relatively slow swing speed. It was the first club that I hit this morning. Uh, but great ball speeds and great average ball speeds, 113. That spin number at 5.7, again, coming off of a hybrid, a seven hybrid, 157 carry, uh, lowest being 155, highest being 163. Launch angle again, this ball gets airborne very, very quickly, 16 degrees, a peak height of 77, and a descent angle of 43.2. First thing about the numbers of the seven uh, wood, or seven hybrid, I think uh, what you've got to do is look at comparing it to, the way I would look at it, this isn't, this isn't for everybody. And if you're not struggling with your seven iron and your longer irons, then of course this is not necessarily relevant to you. But like I said, for a lot of average golfers, this is where maybe not the seven, but certainly at the longer clubs, they start to have problems. My thing would be, I would find it in a lot of instances, I don't think you would generate the same ball speeds and the same launch angles in terms of ball flight with your seven iron as what you might do with this seven hybrid. And that can be a real benefit for a lot of golfers. Um, so if you're struggling in those kind of areas, then I think it's a real good club to consider. And especially, like I said, when you're not losing out in terms of the spin number is very good, this is coming down from a, a good old peak height. And I don't think you're having any problems in stopping this on the greens. I'll, I'll throw up the numbers for the five hybrid, a um, little bit more in terms of warmed up. Um, and again, longer shaft, don't forget, in the five, but uh, club head speed picked up a bit. Fantastic ball speeds and consistent ball speeds, 126 almost miles per hour. Uh, a great spin number again, 4640 spin, 183 on average carry, 13.5 um, launch, 82 peak height. I mean, this ball literally was going up. Uh, and again, good descent angle, good carry, great spin. What's a negative? I think the, probably the negative is, is the attitude to, from, from a lot of golfers is the dismissing this kind of club. And like I said, don't get me wrong, I'm putting myself in that camp as well. I'm not trying to pretend that uh, I, wouldn't have, I would have looked at these and considered them. I wouldn't have. Um, but it's been a real eye-opener. It's been great that the feedback and the comments from people who've perhaps using them currently are suggesting that we should have had a look. And I think it was a great shout. I think it's two great clubs. I think this could probably be, I don't think it's like club relevance. I think we could have looked at these in a number of different, like Callaway, TaylorMade, who's ever, we could have looked at their versions of these and maybe the similar results. But the one thing I like about this as well, good price points, great looking club, great confidence builder, great performance, flipping heck, it's like, it's honestly, and I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, I've no need to, it performed exceptionally well. And uh, for a Tuesday miserable morning in the UK, I don't even tell, that's half a smile on my face. Anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks for the comments. Thanks for the feedback. Thanks for recommending I do this video. And uh, any more suggestions, I'll gladly take on board because I think that was a great video to look at and uh, some great options for average golfers out there. Right, before I get too cold, I'm going to move on to video number two. I'll, uh, I'll catch you soon.